<clears throat> the main thing I want to talk about is a story that is really an old one. <clears throat> that means I heard it when I was very new to hosting Raw, and I don't totally remember it very well. And I would ask Chaitanya, what do you remember? Because he and I were both there. Anyway, it is a story about um, the third crystal. And so everybody, you know, has a personality crystal and a design crystal. And according to a story Rod told us, there was a third crystal and somebody else got, you know, this was a battle that he did with the person who got the third crystal and himself. And that guy, whoever, was in Mexico and Ra essentially prevailed and got the third crystal. I don't know what the third crystal is or was, but um, so many people over the years ask whether, uh, why did the Godhead, the universe, give this to Ra? The you know, human design system, why give it to this creep of a guy? And so <clears throat> I would just say that story was one of enormous shamanistic ability. You know, the description was that those two guys were fighting on a very cosmic level and uh, that Ra killed him off or Ra prevailed. It was according to the time that I remember, it was that this happened around the time of the revelation. So here is one theory. I don't know whether it's true. It does uh, seem possible that Ra stole the system from that guy and therefore had to obliterate him because that guy, if he did receive the system, this is one possibility and we don't know whether or not it's true. I will ask Chaitanya because maybe somewhere there is a recording of um, that story. You know, Rod told us some stories that uh, are nowhere else. And that means, I mean, he could have told other people. The person that I think is worth asking would be Gennaro, Gennaro Brooks. His mother apparently Rob borrowed some money from the mother. <clears throat> and the mother said, Never again can I trust that guy who didn't pay her back. But at any rate, um, the question that many people asked is, why did the human design system come through him? And it is a story that I also remember that he was tickled pink that he owned this privately held esoteric system. And he thought he was gonna be more successful than Bill Gates. That's raw, just 
wanting to thrill us. We're going to be so rich. And, of course, we never were rich. We never got there. But I think Ra always wanted to be rich. And that's related to the fact that his father disowning him, that his father was a wealthy Jew who had some Macy's type shop clothing store. So Rob grew up in a house that had money and he went uh, to college and got married. I reported that. And then with the second wife, I think, Sarah's mother, <clears throat> that's who we abandoned. So the story, once again, raw story, that um, uh, he, and this is recorded, you could hear various versions of this story because that's one he thought was very compelling. Anyway, uh, he lived in Toronto, I think somewhere around that place, and uh, he was selling ads to, you know, make money. Anyway, he had some gig that he was doing ads. He was a director, and that was that he would fly these models and various people to Mexico to do ads. And, you know, it might have been a good gig, but at one point he didn't have enough money big story, same story. He then had only maybe 10% of what he needed. And he must have also owed several people money. So he was um, leaving right then. He had the story that he tells was he drove to a store, left the car running, opened the door to get a pack of cigarettes, and then went to, I don't know how he got from that location to JFK, but somehow right then he left. And of course, <clears throat> that going to Ibiza was to escape these debts. And so he didn't go back to Canada until the statute of limitations was up, maybe seven years or something. Anyway, I think that story is kind of pertinent. Once again, we don't know what happened. I mean, I don't know what happened, but that story is one that is recorded, him leaving and going to Ibiza and how he ended up with the name Ra. His name was Robert Allen. And he gets to a bar in Ibiza, and the guy says, so hi, what's your name? And he opened his mouth raw, and the guy said, okay, great, thanks, raw, and served him. And so his name was Robert Allen. Anyway, so R.A. was quite an all right acronym for him. Anyway, so 
<clears throat> he went to Bisa, I think he was, who knows, but I don't think he was uh, planning to have the experience with the boys. But, you know, that's the story that January 87, when there was this giant supernova, Ra had that human design system land on his lap. And so as far as the copyright and so on, I think Ra did understand the copyright law enough that when, you know, we met him, we were trying to be very conscientious and telling him that if he hired Chaitanya, then the work product was, was Ra's versus Chaitanya. So anyway, uh, Ra made this deal with Chaitanya. And so that was to do the graphics of Ra's white book. So um, he came next time, whatever, maybe in the summer of 94 or a little later, probably, and couldn't pay. And he knew he couldn't pay it. And so then that meant that work product was Chaitanya's and not Ra's. And this is an important piece because Chaitanya and I are interested that our work product get credited back to us. That's something I work on anyway. Um, so going on, I think that the Ibiza friend who gave Ra 25,000 so that Ra could write a book. He came to Germany and wrote the book that was titled The Human Design System. And uh, it came as a box set. That meant you also got the ephemeris. And at the time when we were, you know, studying, it was very evident that the planetary program, how composites work, that was central to what he was doing. The definition type, that means no definition, single, split, triple, quad, were the basis. And having a design to do or to wait was very central to how human design was taught by Ra at that time. Anyway, I think that I now bring it around to the Ray V. Ching, which when you study that, this is so meme-filled. You have gate 27, oh, you might have AIDS or you could get AIDS, or gate 18, work on what has been spoiled, that here is never being satisfied. So we knew all the names. He named all the lines, so you would have 18, line two, 27, line two, whatever then he would name them. And this uh, assumption of 
brilliance from Ra that he knew how to rewrite the I Ching is something I think you should absolutely take into consideration. This was, to me, a crime he did. Small story. In 94, uh, or maybe early 95, I was very uh, excited to write a written report for a famous guy, a celebrity. And so I used Wilhelm's version, and I was quite proud of myself to do this. And Ra, oh my God, I didn't expect it. Ra yelled at me and said, you can only use my I Ching now. That is a kind of clue. And of course, maybe if you know my work, you know that I use other I Ching's and not Ra's. But it was somehow around 2000 or 2001 that I started to question, do you have to have the planets fix the lines? Because if that answer is yes, you will need Ra's version forever. And I dropped it right then, but I asked several other people, like Chaitan and Bettina, they both thought, gee, Ra was accurate, and it was really appropriate, and they proved it. And um, I would say, you believe something and you repeat it enough, you might think you've proved it, but you can live without the planets fixing the lines. Anyway, I am a devotee of the I Ching. I think that the I Ching gives us a moral orientation to aim for the good, this is better, and uh, I would say that that was something Ra absolutely was clear. He didn't like guilt, and because he didn't like guilt, his entire ego design system is based on you not having to feel guilt. No, it's your design, not your fault. And that notion was a very big deal, that concept of no fault. Anyway, <clears throat> I would say that human design can be used to help orient you to your moral superiority to know what it is to learn and to treat your world better. Ra was absolutely happy to tell people some easy, you don't have to learn, you are allowed to just, no choice, be a jerk. You couldn't help it. That's your design. That's how you were born. And, you know, I think, I mean, now we're going to go on to another video some other day. But I think, Ra, you know, knowing my experience, I think he was able to uh, affect me a lot and I didn't want to give him credit that he could destroy me. But, and you know, he didn't bother my spirit. My spirit stayed intact. But um, I was paranoid for a few years that he was gonna come after me and try to sue me or whatever. 
And now <clears throat> that I've done my homework on trademark, copyright, all these issues, I know I could have sued him, but that would have been years back. Defamation or slander, those things are three years. You have to complain, and I didn't complain at all. I just was clear that I didn't want him to destroy me, and he wouldn't. Now, Jürgen, his partner in Germany, the guy who paid for the books and translated his book into German. Jürgen did die, and I think he died of a broken heart. And so how would I know that? I don't, but I do know that Jürgen died of a heart infection, and it happened sort of around the time that I started to be uh, a pariah. Ra really used people. That was something he didn't feel uh, bad about at all. Anyway, so the I Ching. Guys, you should study the I Ching and also you need to study the planetary program.